we're now going to talk about people power. And to present on people power is Sue Pedrick. Um, Sue, uh, she was a tally counter at the International Convention in Chicago, uh, which she regards as an absolutely huge honour. Um, but due to connections um, uh, with um, at the TRIO training in Vietnam, Sue was also asked to judge in Pakistan for the newest district in the world. And in Denver, Colorado, the keynote speaker for our district online conference this year was Greg Van Borsum, who was the first Australian accredited speaker, and that's where he was actually picked up from. So contests have, have taken Sue around the world and made incredible connections, friendships, and recently brought a Texan, Luisa Montalvo, who was the second runner-up in the International Convention in 2019, she brought her back to our district awards night last weekend. Contests deliver on all fronts. The talent and the stories you hear open your world to a true gem of resources and Toastmasters. So please welcome her back, Sue Pedrick. Thank you, Nick. So you know all of the people around you. You know who are supportive, helpful, within your own clubs and they're your resources. And it starts from the beginning. You need to look at your clubs and at club level, you need to look at who's around to give things a go and have a practice with. At club level, although it is the stage to lead you all the way to the world stage, particularly with the international contest, it's good to have that practice grounding at club level. If you get lots of people in from other areas or divisions or anywhere else outside of your club that are supporting you for a club level contest, you cut out that resource that has the training ground at your club level. So by saying having the 13 people you need to hold a contest at club level trained up, then you've got 13 multiplied by however many areas multiplied by the, the divisions multiplied by the district trained. So you've got a big base level to work at. If you cut off those opportunities at the club level to train and support people, to give it a go of being a timer or a tally counter or anything else, you then lose a resource base that you potentially will need when it hits the area level and above. So when you hit area level, you'll be feeding on all the clubs to see who can support you. And it's really encouraging if you've had that training at club level. So that's one of the first areas where you can gain people. So I'll just, oh, I'd like to share my screen, Matt. Can I do that? I've made you the host. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go back in, oh, before I'll just stop share for a moment, I'll just put in the, the chat box all of the links I've just used here. So this is for people power. Okay, so I'll go back to my presentation and share the screen. So I'm going to leave it in this format because even though you can see the next screen coming up, I want to type into it in a little while. So people power at contest, we've got that. So when we move forward, so everyone at club level who isn't contesting can help you with organizing the club contest. Anyone who's held a role, as area director upwards have hosted a contest and last year's contest coordinators are your valuable resources as well. So the people requirements change at each level. In the rule book you'll see at club level you need a certain amount of people to support you. Area, division, district, region, quarter final, semi-final and final. So you can tell me at club level how many people you need besides competitors, how many people you need to support you in a club contest. Matt? 
I think it's probably at least eight or ten, just off the top of my head without actually counting them all. Okay, has anyone said anything in the chat box that I can't see? Some people said ten people, eleven people. Technically it's thirteen. Terrific. Yes, 13 it is. Can you list off the 13 that are required? Uh, you've got your contest chair, your chief yep. judge, five judge, uh, judges. Yes. Uh, you have tally counters. There is two of them, I think. Yes. Uh, two timers. Yep. Uh, a sergeant of arms uh, in evaluation there is two sergeants of arms yep and that's uh, it i think that's it <laughs> yep yep that's your 13. so as much as i said at club level you need to use 13 additional people to help you some clubs only have 13 members at the moment so the club numbers are low so ask any other clubs in your area to help support you if you can ask them to step up and give you a hand with helping facilitate these club contests because it is a practice ground for all of you. Try not to use the same people all of the time. Try and train additional resources because as, as you go further up the chain, there will be limited people if you've only utilised the same people all the time. So, the people power, this is what I put in the chat box, there are district officers. So all of the officers that are area director, division director, they cannot compete. They're not allowed to compete in contests. So they are straight away an easy go-to person when you get to the next higher level. So all of them are not eligible to compete. But on the district officer list, there is a section that says district officers, but they're support people. All of those listed, such as the, um, let's see, education and training coordinator, the logistics manager, the parliamentarian, all of those can compete. So it's clearly defined on the website, but all of the roles above that, such as the trio, the PR manager, the uh, communications manager and the finance manager and the immediate past district director they cannot compete so the seven roles at the top can't compete the ones in the middle that are district support roles can compete and all the area and division directors can't compete so the area and division directors are your support people that can either guide you or can offer support at the higher levels. So also on the, um, in the district member hall of fame that I mentioned earlier and showed you briefly, in the hall of fame, you can see previous competitors. Sometimes you might want to invite previous competitors in to talk to your club about how they, their skill sets and other resources they had to get through to the level they got through to. So look at that as an additional support level for your clubs, but also look at the District 73 Facebook page. Many people are asking for judges and often when it comes to that really vital time when it's a, like a feeding frenzy of finding people who, can, who are capable of judging at the higher level, this is the resource that is valuable for people to quickly find someone. If you're after a judge, please ask them to private message you because you're not meant to know who the judges are. So when you put a message on the Facebook say, page saying, I can, I'm after judges, please add a note to say that you need a private um, message sent to you, not a blatantly written down all these lists of people who are saying, oh, I can judge and I can judge. Well, that's not allowed. We're not meant to really know who the judges are. So please be careful of that when you're advertising on the District 73 Facebook page. But please utilise that resource as the contained home page to get judges very quickly. I know there's a, um, a Victorian judges actual group 
within that page people have advertised when they're just particularly after judges in Victoria and there could be one set up in South Australia as well if needed but it's whatever you need you need to value those resources that you've got so today I'd like to ask you are there any other suggestions besides the ones I've given that we can share with others around the district and you have to call it out because I can't see anything in the chat box so I can add them here today. Um, Sue, we we used to have, and I'm going back long long way back, an actual list of those that had um, were at least judges up at uh, area level or above. It might yeah. be worth um, re. Who would keep that list? Um, Central Division kept that list. Who? Who in Central Division? Would it be the di division director? Uh, it was the all the area directors had it and the um, division director had it so that anybody could contact them and say, I need judges. Yeah, but who uh, would collect the list initially? Who would you suggest to collect it? Who would the information feed into? I can't remember who it was actually um, fed to. Maybe I can speak to you afterwards. Sure. So I would suggest at this stage to maybe feed it into the division director. Yeah. D division director to share. Okay. Um, any other suggestions you'll need to call them out? Uh, Hi, Sue. Um, there's one Facebook group. It's called D73 Melbourne Judges. Yeah, that's the one I just spoke about. Yeah, so the, I've just put it in the chat box for everyone. Oh, thank you. Any other suggestions? I know that um, last night it was suggested just to uh, sort of source within the area, so support each other around the club. So five clubs, you know, support each other. Yep, that's a great idea. Because if you source within the area, then it builds that camaraderie that you can take to support at the next level. Sue, it's Sharon here. Yes. Um, we've had some international guests come to, um, and they're Toastmasters from across the world. Can, you, can they be used for judges if they're interested? Yep. In the club contest? If you know enough about their background. You mean the eligibility? Yes, yeah. So you need to know that, yes, they have done something. And how do you find out that? Well, you can ask them to go onto their profile and I would suggest all of you go to your Toastmasters International profile, which is logging into the website. And then in the profile, you can add information, but you can also download your eligibility. So if someone would like to share, what level they're on by just giving a snapshot of that I would be asking your international guests because you don't know if they've only done three speeches but they're an enthusiastic person you don't know enough about them unless they have DTM written next to their name and if they've got that written you need to take it by face value because if they're on the international website and they had DTM written next to their name it means they're a distinguished Toastmaster and if they weren't I think they would be called out very quickly someone would pick up that they weren't um, who they said they were so I think you can probably utilize anyone that has DTM written next to them as well I'll put e.g. DTM anything else mm -hmm. or I've got a suggestion about how to find people. Yeah. Okay, so what I've noticed last year and also the year before is that people who really struggle with finding officials for their contests are people who don't have a strong network of Toastmasters friends. So uh, if you're visiting at the clubs and attending training and going to other district events, then you get to know lots of people and lots of people get to know you and then you can all help each other out with your contests. But the people who struggle are the people who just keep to themselves and don't go to any of these events, don't visit other clubs and don't really know anyone. And then they basically have no one to call upon for help when they need it. Terrific. So networks, building the networks and make sure you have a broader base of people to call on. Yeah, because so uh, 
just because you're in one club does not mean to say you can go and that you cannot present you know, at a separate club because sometimes they don't have speakers. So if you do that, you then get to know them and also who, who your potential judges could be. Yep. Uh, Am I? Through, through you? Yes. Yeah, one of the things that we can each club can do is uh, where they have a person that has a reasonable experience but has never done judging, at least at each competition, have them join the judges so they have a bit of a go at it. We also, uh, with Southern Cross, we hand out the uh, judging sheets to the non-judges so they can make their own opinion, practice uh, as they go, even though they're not actually judging. It also makes it harder to uh, know who the real judges are. Yep. So judging ballots shared for all at club level for practice? Yeah. Yes. Yep. And even, even do that maybe a few times when uh, somebody's doing an ordinary speech so they can practice judging. Okay, practice judging at um, regular meetings. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And you can also have a mock contest. So yes. often people are really struggling in the old manuals, the traditional system if they were competitors all the time, they didn't have the opportunity to ever be a contest chair. So swapping it around and making the contestants, the competitor, the contest chairs and the judges and the people who normally don't compete, putting them in that role. And that that's a good way of just understanding how the system works from both levels. And then you have a better, uh, appreciation of what the judges go through and what the competitors go through and what is really needed for the support because there's nothing worse than going into a contest and feeling insecure or uncomfortable because all the mechanics around you is falling apart and if you're a competitor you're already just really struggling at your own level to compete and share what you need to share with sharing your speech and you don't want to have see all the mechanics going along, along behind you that are falling apart. You want that strong team to be sharing things. So, yeah, make sure you practice at club level so that you can go forward. Are there just, any other suggestions? Just one other while, while you're there, Sue, that uh, we have done uh, with, like, Aldenga is a much smaller club. And we find, even for our own club, when you're having a club competition, you are running out of the number of people to a, a compete and B to run the competition. So if the two clubs get together at the same time, at the same location, you've only need one lot of judges for the two clubs. There's two, the competitions are run separately, but the same, you know, uh, people doing the, the background work. Uh, so the, the people in club A are not, competing with the people in Club B, they're competing with the others in Club A. So sharing the contest separately, but on the same night. On the same night. Yep. Or yeah. same day, whatever the might, situation might be. Yeah. Yes, because that started with Adelaide Central and uh, Adelaide City. Yes. Yeah. The, and, it, and, it is, and it's exactly because of that reason. We don't... Have the sometimes numbers. we don't have enough. So if you put the two competitions on, the judges can do both, but they must judge them separately. Sure. Yes. Do we have anyone outside of the district, um, outside of Central Division, not outside of the district, outside of Central <laughs> Division, that might be able to share what's done interstate? Uh, yes, uh, Sue. We tend to do the same sort of thing. Um, we go to um, each other's contests and uh, then offer offer to be judging at, at someone else's club level. Like, for example, Sunbury and Macedon Rangers always send a couple of judges to our contest and we always go and support them. And that sort of thing is, uh, is really, really good when you... Uh, got your surrounding clubs involved. Okay, so you share officials with other clubs? Yep. Clubs and as 
as resources that is it's just expected that you share them out well it's become it's become a tradition yep yeah it's pretty much reciprocated when you're asked to do judging it's just you know manners i suppose yes yeah, yeah. okay and I think that's why when I did those 73 contests across club area, division and district, I had so many people. And because I'd helped out, they felt obliged to help me. You need to be careful that your judges at um, area level don't form like this little wolf pack that go from the same judges judging all the time. It's nice to have a, a bit of variety as well. Okay. If I can just say one thing there, Sue, that is, we've, that I was doing way back when we held an area competition. Let's say there's four clubs. Each club supply at least two judges. Therefore, it's dead equal on numbers of judges from each club. No bias. No bias. It will counteract any bias that may, which shouldn't ever happen in Toastmasters, but we're all human. Uh, so each club supplies two judges and supplies a couple of people for the tally counting, timing, etc. So we have a, an, pool. a pool of uh, people to uh, to run an area competition without any bias. Sure. And therefore, also, if the club club uh, C says we can only supply one judge, well, they can't complain that there's a bias. Yep. So um, ask for two representatives. Two, two judge representatives and two tally counter come what have you. No. From each club. Each club. So at least if you have two representatives from each club, then you've got a, a base level to work from and they've all got that support. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, also, so uh, with your uh, paperwork for the competition, uh, you can also you know, you know, pull your resources there as well because yeah. there will be some clubs who just can't uh, don't know, digest material whereas other ones can. Yes, yes. So make sure, okay, so how would you like me to word that, Peter? Ooh, good question. Pull, pull resources? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it doesn't say is that what you're saying? Pull C. resources. No. Uh, yes, Matt. I just wanted to let you know that although you haven't yet used your allotted 30 minutes, we are Over time. running nine sure. minutes behind the agenda. Thank so I just you. wanted to let you know. And so really I would like to finish up here. Please utilize those hints, those links that have been put in the chat box and make use of the people power around you because there are certainly so many resources. This website, this um, little um, presentation today will be shared again. It's just a few additional resources for you, but by turning up today, by turning up to any event, you are going to find your key people. You'll see who's on the screen. You'll see who's supportive. You'll see who is willing to really act on your behalf and is interactive and keen with supporting the organisation. And that's the sort of person you want supporting you at contest level. So make use of all these faces you see around you today because they're your key people to supporting any contest. Back to you, Mr Toastmaster. <laughs>